Um, today we will discuss cell structure and function. You have the slide. You can just go ahead. And... Cell is essentially like the basic building block of any living tissue. The human being cell is the basic building block. An animal cell is the basic building block. A plant cell is the basic building block. But the focus of the discussion today is to discuss cells of human tissue. And um, the cell again is also the smallest working unit of any living tissue. The same way they say atom is the smallest unit of any inorganic tissue. And all cells will come from pre existing cell through cell division. There's no cell that just comes out on it. It's always from a pre existing cell. By the process of cell division, we did a bit of that in biology. So some examples of cells that you know, there's the amoeba protein. You know amoeba protein, right? There's bacteria cells, there's nerve cells that can look, and nervous impulse to your brain. There's the red blood cells, you've seen that one in the lab. Then there's plant cells, and cells can be on and on. There are many types of cells. But there are two major types of cells. There's the prokaryotic, there's the eukaryotic. I will explain what I mean. Now, the prokaryotic cells usually will not have surrounding membranes. They will have just a few internal structures. They are usually from bacterial cells. Pro is usually from bacterial cells, so they will have one cell organisms. Most times when they culture bacterial cells in the lab, they see a lot of cells. That's why they tell you there is florid growth of so and so, perhaps staph aureus. But it is plenty cells, each of it standing on its own, as individuals will stand on their own. Then, now, eukaryotic cells are the cells of human, cells of animals. They contain organelles. Organelles are like the internal structure of the cell. I told you prokaryotic is just majorly membranes. Eukaryotic will have membranes. We still not have the internal organelles. Those internal organelles are the ones that does the work of the cell. All of them combine together, then give you a tissue. All of the tissues combined together give you an organ. All of the organs combined together give you a system. What do I mean? There is the small cell of the kidney that they will call nephrons. If you combine together, you say you have a tissue of the kidney. Combine together, you say you have the kidney as an organ. Combine together, you say you have the renal system. You understand, because by then you now have the kidneys, you have the ureters, you have the bladder, and so on and so forth that gives you the renal system. If it's the GIT, the gastrointestinal system, you will go back to start from the minutest cell of the intestine that will come together to form a tissue, that will come together to form an organ, like the appendix is part of the intestine, is, a, is an organ on its own. You understand it? Of course, all these organs combined together will then give you the gastrointestinal system. I hope that makes sense. So most living organisms, aside from bacteria and all those unicellular organisms, amoeba and the likes, they have eukaryotic cells. Most living organisms. So now, the typical animal cell, I wish can see this, but just go along with me. You will get to watch it when I'm done with it. Most, um, most typical animal cells will have the cell membrane, then some organs inside. You have the plasma membrane, which is the one on the outer part. This should be like a revision for you because I want to believe we did it earlier on. Then you have the endoplasmic reticulum. You have the nucleus, you have the ribosome, you have the lysosome, you have the mitochondria that is said to be what? The powerhouse, powerhouse of the cell, and you have the Golgi bodies. There are some other minor, minor ones, but these are like the essential ones. Like you have to know components of any eukaryotic cells. You cannot afford not to know this. So now the cell parts, when, when they mention cell parts, they're essentially talking about the organelles that are inside the cell parts, inside the cell, so that the parts of the cell. The cell membrane, 
you know that's the outer membrane of the cell and you control the movement of the cell on the outer parts. It's oftentimes double layered for animal cells. Then the cell wall, this you would many times found, find in plants and bacteria. You may not find a, a cell wall in an animal cell. You find in plants and bacteria, in cell membrane you will find. Essentially what it does is support and protect the cell. Now within the cell, the most important part, the most important organelle is the nucleus. Why is nucleus the most important organelle? Can you have cell activities without the nucleus? Can you have cell division without the nucleus? So the nucleus is what will control the cell activity. It's almost like the engine, so to say. Why mitochondrion is the power? Because it gives the energy. The engine within, so to say, the most important part of the organelle is the nucleus because it is direct cell activity. Then it is also the one that comes contains the genetic materials, the DNA, and is separated from the cytoplasm, that's the inner content, the fluid within the cell, by something called a nuclear membrane. Why you have a cell membrane, you also have a nuclear membrane. So now, the nuclear membrane, like I said, it will surround the nucleus. Again, it's made up of two layers. Then it has openings that will allow for materials to enter and leave the nucleus. Then the chromosome is within the nucleus. You've heard of the chromosomes before, right? Thank you very much. And it's made of the DNA. Are we together? It's from the nucleus, your DNA, from your DNA, your chromosomes. That's the basic building block. Of the DNA and it will contain instruction for your traits. The color of your hair came from your um, chromosomes. The color of your eyes will come from your chromosomes. Your height will come from your chromosomes. So it will contain your the instruction that forms the straight the traits and the characteristics that any individual will demonstrate or manifest. Then the nucleus is inside the nucleus contains RNA. RNA is like the building block for protein. Animal cells are essentially made up of proteins. Most organs, most tissues are essentially made up of proteins. So, and the building block for proteins is from the RNA. So, you talk of the enzymes, you talk of even the process of procreation, you still need a lot of proteins. You talk of signaling and sending of messages, like if you want to and carry out nap conduction from your feet to your brain. There's some proteins that will do that. The hormones that will regulate a lady's menstrual cycles, those are also proteins. But the building block for that is the RNA. RNA is inside the nucleus. So now, onto the cytoplasm. It's like a gel within the cell membrane, within like the inner cavity of the cell is surrounded by the cell membrane. So each cell usually will be able to contain its own cytoplasm individually, except when there's a need for communication of some sort between cell to cell. And it will usually contain the hereditary material of that cell. Then the endoplas endoplasmic reticulum what it does is to move materials around in the cell. You can call it the vehicle within the cell. There are two types. What are the two types of endoplasmic reticulum? Hmm? They're smooth and... A smooth endoplasmic reticulum is rough endoplasmic reticulum. You didn't hear that when you were doing all levels. You edit it. The smooth, what happens to the smooth? Why is it called a smooth and the plastic reticulum?
It lacks ribosomes. Ribosomes are those things that look like dots that you see on the body of the um, endoplasmic reticulum. So the smooth lacks ribosomes. The rough ones, they are embedded with ribosomes on the surface. That's also when you picture them under the microscope. One looks rough, one looks smooth. Both of them are endoplasmic reticulum. So what's the function of the ribosomes? Every cell contains thousands and thousands of ribosomes, and the essential function is to make proteins. You know that cells will function of proteins, animal cells will function of proteins, then the, end of the ribosomes are essential. And they are usually found floating throughout the cell. Now onto mitochondria, the powerhouse of a cell. What does it produce? produces energy through chemical reactions. That's the major thing it does. And this will help to break down fats and carbohydrates. It will also control the level of water and other materials in the cells. And it will help to recycle. And it compose protein, fats, carbohydrates. It breaks it down by process of decomposition and sometimes by process of recycling. You don't need this. You can be move it here to use it in some other way. Then the Golgi body, like a protein packaging plant. Protein is secreted by some, somewhere by another type of organelle. The Golgi body will do the work of packaging it. Then it will now move the materials within the cell. And it also helps to move materials out of the cells. So the proteins that have been produced is packaged by the Golgi bodies, moved within the cells, and moved out of the cell. Then lysosomes, one day they contain enzymes that help to digest within the cell of animals, within the cells of plants. Within plants, they will digest protein, fats, carbohydrates. Within um, human cells, they would also digest bacterial cells in addition. So when there's, there's, a, there's a human cell called um, macrophages, that engulfs bacterial cells. When it engulfs bacterial cells, the lysosomal bodies will release, release some enzymes that will just naturally digest it. Otherwise, you should be wondering what happens to bacterial cells when it enters the body. So there are some cells that have been um, genetically, there are some cells that have been genetically engineered just for that purpose. If a bacteria comes in, it's able to hold itself around it and engulf almost like it's swallowing. Then the cell membrane opens up, then the lysosome release with some lysosomal products that would, of course, digest the bacterial cells. Then the lysosome would also transport undigested materials to the cell membrane for removal. So a bacteria comes in, microphage has engulfed it, it had digested it, but there are still some materials that were not safely digested. The lysosome that will take it to the cell membrane from the cell membrane out of the cell so that it doesn't destroy the integrity of that cell. I hope that makes sense. Now, the lysosome, because you, you know it contains enzymes that can lyse and digest things, if the lysosome ever breaks or explodes, the cell will become degenerated because it will literally lyse. When you hear the word lyse medically, it means Right. It means make it fluid. You understand? So that's the root word for lysosome. There's a lecture I, I um, recorded for you people on medical terminologies. It means lice is true. You understand? So lysosome in, within the cell, if it breaks down, like the content leaks out into the cytoplasm, it destroys the integrity of that cytoplasm and it can end up lysing such a cell. Inflammatory reaction sometimes is from the action of, action of lysosome. When you see that swelling, you see the redness, you see the pain. Sometimes lysosome has some parts to play in that.